Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Onions. Today we're studying Proverbs chapter 22 and 23. Also, we are in a new hotel and place. Yes, we're now in Kentucky, so we can go to the Creation Museum tomorrow. And we're super excited for that. And we plan to take lots of pictures and videos and share with you guys. So as we read through Proverbs 22 and 23 today, um, we have some takeaways just kind of all over the place. So we'll start with Jack's and I'll end it. Okay, so my takeaway comes from the very first verse in chapter 22. It's a verse that I memorized in my first year of Bible drill and it says, a good name is to be chosen over great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. So um, the reason that really stood out to me is because a great reputation matters over wealth because it doesn't really matter if you're a rich person. I'm gonna take Scrooge from Charles Dickens' um, Christmas book novel. Um, so he's rich, but he has a really bad attitude and no one likes him. But um, there is that really poor person in that book, but he's a very nice guy and everyone likes him. That's true. So good character is more valuable mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. your status mm -hmm. in society which is kind of the opposite of what the world tells us. John, what about you? Uh, my takeaway was verse four of chapter uh, 22, and it says, respecting the Lord and not being proud will bring you wealth, honor, and life. And so what that tells me is if you worship the Lord, then you're gonna get good things. Like, well, you're gonna have good wealth in a long life, so. That's right, mm -hmm. I love that. Well, today, as I read, what stood out to me was God's heart for the poor. His thoughts on the poor have been sprinkled all throughout the Proverbs. Mm -hmm. And he also says a lot about the poor in chapter 22 today. Verse 2 says, The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. So we were all created at the same starting line. Um, and so that's important for us to remember that just because we have plenty and they have less doesn't mean one is more important than the other. We were all created by God. Verse 16 says, Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. Verses 22 and 23 say, Do not rob the poor because he is poor or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and rob of life those who rob them. Maybe this is on my mind because I read the Beatitudes a couple of days ago. So the upside down kingdom of how different God's kingdom is from the world today is really fresh on my mind. I also love when I see a common theme stand out when I read from two different things. When we notice that, I think it's super important for us to pay attention to those times. And so that's why this idea of the poor stood out to me. In those Beatitudes that I read, um, you can find it in Matthew 5. I read it in Luke 6, I think. Um, it says, the Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And it continues on, and it's a lot of those. Um, it seems kind of backwards mm -hmm. according to the world today. But we can easily see God's heart for the poor, how he loves and how he cares for them and how he takes care of them. He says other things about the poor all throughout scripture. Deuteronomy 15, 11, God told us, there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore, I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy and the poor in your land. First John three seventeen says, but if anyone has the world's goods, and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? God shows us his heart for the poor. God tells us that there will always be poor people. He tells us how we should treat them, and he tells us the responsibility that we have as their fellow brothers. So for today's challenge, when we read scripture and God reveals things to us, we then have responsibility. What are we going to do with what God told us, what, with what we read, what we learned that day? And so for me today, when we read these Proverbs and these verses, it makes me look at myself and ask myself a few questions. What is my heart for the poor? Do I care for them like God does? Do I even spend any time thinking about them? 
How can I do my part in caring for the poor? How can I use what God has blessed me with to help me care for them? Or do I use up and spend everything that God has blessed me with without any thought of saving some so that I can help others? And what about you? Think about these things, talk about these things with your family and ask God to tell you how you can have a heart for the poor the way that he does. All right, friends, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Bye.